everyone. This is a different background than I usually have. Um, and it's not totally balanced, so I apologize. I am in my uh, office. Uh, I'm in my office, but I'm in my bed. There's a nap bed in my office where I take my, my daily naps. And I've been bedridden for, this is the third day, uh, because I've had a foot infection. Um, and it's getting better, thankfully, but I haven't been able to work at my desk. And so this is a different, uh, different video environment here. Um, I want to share with you kind of my reflections on, on, on this experience of having an unexpected illness, I guess, or incapacitation to just do what my usual rhythms are. And if you've seen my other videos about life monastery, you know, I'm trying to create and stay with a, a rhythm of spiritual practice throughout the day, throughout the week. And, you know, I had, I feel like I just barely got started with that rhythm. It's been maybe like two weeks of, of a lot of trial and error and experimentation. And then this, uh, this sort of illness. And, um, you know, it's, it's, quite a bit of effort each day just to hop around, <laughs> just to hop around on one foot trying to, you know, do my hygiene <laughs> and get, get, get food and, uh, you know, work um, from bed. And what's natural, what's the regular pattern it would be, uh, because my life monastery rhythms have not been instituted yet after years of practice it's very natural just to forget about it and i i was you know the first day of my illness i looked back after the whole day i'm like did i do anything <laughs> for my spiritual practice today barely anything and the second day i was a little bit more conscious and i started doing it a little bit and then this is the third day now and hopefully i will be more aware of my rhythm, my spiritual rhythms as my foot gets better. But I just think about it this and like, I want to have a regular spiritual practice. I, 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 but no one is going to force me to do it. Like no one's gonna, I mean, I, I, I live with my wife, I, I wouldn't want her to, you know, nag at me and force me to do something that I sh I, in other words, probably as you, we want the freedom to be able to decide and do our spiritual practices without, I mean, I guess it's kind of funny I'm talking about life monastery because in, in a real monastery, um, you, you purposely give up freedom so that you have external uh, structure to do your spiritual practice. And that, again, some people are called to that. I'm not. I'm a householder, so-called, which means I'm giving myself the freedom, which also comes with, I need to give my, I need to create that structure. So with the gift of freedom comes the opportunity, the responsibility for me to create my own structure of spiritual practice. No one else is coming to save me. Um, and so, but that's true of life in general. I mean, most of you watching this, probably all of you watching this, are not living in the monastery. And you are the creator of your own life. This life in this earth. I'm not saying you're the creator of all universe, but you are certainly in this incarnation in this moment, you've been given the freedom to make tons of mistakes, to not do the right thing, or to do the right thing, whatever the right thing means for you at the moment, your conscience, you know, you align with that. But it's such, it's always so surprising to me. And I always have to remind myself that the silence of life when we do 
it's like, sure, our conscience might come in, but, but so many of us have learned to ignore our conscience or to be overburdened by our conscience. But it's like the larger silence of life. No, no one's telling you what to do. You can listen to teachers. You can listen to mentors. But they're just one small voice in your life. I mean, you can make their voice large in your life if you want to. But the more responsibility you take for your life, the more you realize there's a giant silence in life. Giant silence of God is not speaking down from the skies in a, in a megaphone saying, now you will do this, now you will do that. God's always been really... The, the, it's so funny. I feel like the more people are connected to spirit, the more, I don't know, I, I feel like, sure, some people might, you know, be channelers and they are deep, di divinely connected and it's like there's a, there's a microphone in their head from, from God saying you should do this or from or their angel guides or whatever. I find it to be the opposite. The more I've matured, the more I've matured, the more, you know, they call it the still small voice. It's like the more the whisper gets softer because the more I've been given the freedom and the sovereignty to do what is, whatever it is, I get to determine what's right and wrong. The more I've matured, the more I've realized this. No one else can determine for me what's right and wrong. Like I said, yes, there is God. And yes, um, the, as we connect to divine source, we might hear some guidance. But my feeling about it is that God wants us to become adults and to decide for ourselves what is right and wrong and to suffer the consequences or to enjoy the consequences, to understand the ripple effects of our actions and of our thoughts. So once again, I'm back to my bedridden rhythm where I can decide to practice my spirituality or not. The unexpected will always come. <laughs> if we can expect anything in life, it's there will be unexpected times. And so for those of us who want to practice our spirituality regularly, back to this idea, you are the creator of your life. No one is coming to save you. No one's going to, God's not going to use a big microphone. And if, if God does use a big microphone, it's because you really are struggling and you need a lot of help. Fine. You, God might use the microphone through other people. They might give you an intervention. But the more we mature, the less interventions people need to give to us. And so, same with God. The less God needs to intervene and say, well, now you've got to create this structure. I'm going to create the structure for you because you can't do it on your own. But the more we mature, the more we want to be a creator of our life, the more we want to um, rise up to be a leader in life, then the more we have to decide, well, when the unexpected comes, will we still create, follow a rhythm? Because no one's gonna do it for us. And the last thing I'll say is this. The rhythm or your spiritual practice is always there available for you. And we can always ease into it without a lot of you know flailing around or whatever like for example i can always come back to my energy reboot it only needs to take 20 seconds it's so gentle it's so simple and yet when i come back to it i rem reminded it yet again of the deeper what i believe is the deeper truth of existence and what this is all about and so come back again and again and again to your spiritual practice because you are the creator of this life. You get to determine your structures. You get to determine how much 
you grow. Thanks for watching.